Alyssa is founder of Professional Revel and um, knows everything about the startup scene here in Amsterdam. And we're getting a crash course, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so I love the color light blue. <laughs> so yeah, I, I thought uh, normally with my company um, I, I sort of share startup lessons, but for today I really want to give you a little guide to the startup city Amsterdam. Uh, who here works at a startup? Okay. Who here works with startups or for startups or something? Okay. Who here would like to work with a startup? Okay. So that's, that's three. That's good. Um, so, Startup City Amsterdam. First, I'm going to tell you a bit about me and startups and how I ended up uh, being a, a know all uh, when it comes to startups. Ten typical startup kind of people you find in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And through that, I actually, that's actually my guide. So through 10 types of people, I'll guide you through Amsterdam. Three things that have been happening in Startup City Amsterdam that's, that are interesting. What's next for me and Startup City, I hope, and a QA. and a So me and startup. So what started out with uh, getting to know uh, startups, I was really sort of admiring and really interested in. This is Nalda of We Transfer. Um, I, it all started with a curiosity, like, who are these startups? Uh, how are they uh, changing the way we work, the way we set up companies? Um, and not just in the tech business, it was also in, in fashion and food. So we, I started a blog uh, with, a, with my co-founder. And then at one point, we started a company called Professional Rebel. And then we started sharing lessons from those startups to to others. So here you see me with the, actually the sort of startup prince, uh, mm -hmm. Prince Constantine uh, van Oranje. And then you meet these kinds of people. So you just want to, I just wanted to know everything startups did. And then at one point you get invited for, for all kinds of other events. And you meet these kind of people and you can share, you know, how startups work. So now we're becoming a serious company after four years. And um, our biggest clients are, are companies like Energy, Dutch Energy Company, Ascent, uh, PostNL, um, sort of the Dutch TNT, and uh, all kinds of governmental organizations. And uh, what we do is we try to help them uh, push the internal professional rebels, so the ones who are changing the status quo within the organizations by connecting them to startups, people who are changing the status quo with their company, and then, you know, changing business as usual. So that's, that's the pitch of my company. And then there's one other thing we do, we organize really big organizations, uh, organizations big events, and this is one of them. It's a Capital Tour XXL, and we put 150 startups on a bike, and um, actually they put themselves on their bikes <laughs> and they cycle through Amsterdam and visit VC offices, venture capitalists and um, the goal of it is to make it much more accessible, that broad world of investors and uh, most of the time they're you know, on the 11th floor in this big building and they're, they're 50 plus in gray and in gray suits so you know how can I ever talk with them if I'm a tech startup founder so we put them on the bikes, let them to the to the offices, and they can ask the VCs anything they want to ask. So this is something we're going to do for the second edition in September. Um, we do much more, but I think um, I'll want to guide you through Amsterdam, through these 10 typical startup types. So the young muggles. And now, after about three, four years, um, when these kinds of guys started, they're becoming a real thing. So this is Naldo of We Transfer, and he just got a really big investment of a Silicon Valley uh, in VC office. And We Transfer is, yeah, really growing up. Who knows We Transfer here? Okay, so that's good. Who didn't know We Transfer yet? Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, you can send really big uh, uh, documents through we So, and there, there are more. There, you have uh, Travelbird, uh, Booking.com, um, and most of the times these are sort of startup um, uh, companies. And internally, you know, they're really cool, but 
most of the time you don't meet them that often. I mean, they're completely focused on their company, of course. So, uh, and that's why they're models, probably, because they're really focused. So, um, yeah, I think. Yeah, so focus. Oh, man, no. So that's always a lesson. So they're, they're sort of a big inspiration for a lot of us. Um, the old models. Uh, uh, this is uh, Boris of the next week. Oh, terrible. <laughs> Sorry, Boris. No. This is Boris of uh, the next web. And he is actually one of the first, like a generation, you can say. They're like, I don't know, six or ten of these uh, 40, 50 plus startup guys in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. I can give you a list of all of them. But um, uh, Boris is like the classic uh, type of uh, startup model. And the next web is a really big website and a really big conference actually at the end of May. They're, they're organizing the next one. Um, yeah, and if you know him, it's handy. Um, <laughs> Is a tech nerd. He's Raimal. He started Layer, and there are a lot of. And this is actually where it always starts in the start a startup scene in any city. I think starts with the you know the hackers and founders, the ones who dare to to try some new technology. Um, and this was really where it started, like four years ago, four or five years ago. And now he they sold Layer to another company, and he's starting a new company. Um, so the tech nerd. And you can find them at the Meetup Founders and uh, Hackers and Founders, which is a really cool meetup, actually. And they're existing already since 2011. The Intellectuals, and this one, not a usual, uh, like an unusual suspect in the startup scene. Mm -hmm. um, and one guy started Das Magazine, an uh, intellectual uh, magazine with literary books. Uh, one guy started uh, the correspondent, uh, or also journalist pieces, uh, really high-end journalist pieces. But uh, also Alexander Klupping with Blendo. I think he's also a sort of intellectual startup. And they're not really mixing with the rest of us. Like, uh, we know them, but we don't mix that often. I don't mind, though, you know, I like you guys. But uh, that's just, you know, they're intellectuals. <laughs> then you have the gurus, they're really, they're, they're a little bit in the same as the old mogul, like, you know, they've been there, they've done that, and they're going to tell you how you can do it. Um, and this is, I think, our biggest startup guru of the, of the moment, Oscar Kneppes. He started Rockstar, which is a really good accelerator for startups. The other one is a Startup Bootcamp, and Patrick De Seel, uh, head of Startup Bootcamp, is also, you know, long hair, surfy dude, sharing his startup guru knowledge to the world. But Oscar also does yoga and meditation, so I think he's a little bit, you know. Um, the next is sort of the sharing economy, so the sort of, you know, we're gonna put out something that's really gonna, you know, make the world a better place. So this is Dan Wedderpol. He started Peerbee, uh, actually quite, uh, a successful app. They just um, did a crowdfunding campaign and got two million, like in five days or something. And they wanted to get one and a half. That was the goal. And then at day one, already half a million, like was crazy. And they've been around for four years, and now he's just um, yeah going steep. So check it out, Peerbi. But there are so much more of these. And they're really, you know, um, sympathetic people um, who share anything with you. So they're always interesting. The networker. So, and that's a little bit like me. This is JJ. He organizes uh, the Silicon Drink About. And he knows everybody. Just, you know, like he says, like, Melissa knows everybody. We're like networkers. We like to organize big events. And we like to sort of connect everybody. Um, always really handy to know of course the foreigner so that's why I like it to be here there are not that many um, <laughs> somehow we don't do the crossover uh, as good enough with the expat or the you know the ones more uh, so non dutchies who are really you know active and have the right skills so there's not enough crossover I think and this guy Paul Connell has been really working hard to get that crossover 
and he organizes Uprise Festival, which is in two weeks. So if you want to get to know the startup scene, go to Uprise Festival. Um, the sorority <laughs> startup. I really wanted to uh, get him in there because there's this group in Amsterdam. And uh, you know, if you know them individually, I don't know who they, who was at core here, the Dutch person. Before I'm really, before I'm gonna, you know, before I'm gonna really, uh, uh, how do you say it? Volledig huh? offend somebody. Anyway, so there is uh, there you have sorority. I don't know if you know them in your country, but in Amsterdam they're they're quite dominant and they can be really. Yeah, I'm, I'm the best. Um, seriously, I'm the best. You know, they're like that. They don't say it. M they they do actually. <laughs> but anyway, so this is a guy, and he's a really nice guy, of course. And he has a startup feature. But this is sort of the classic sorority, and they're sort of more. Yeah, I'm gonna have a skill up. You know, I'm gonna conquer the world, and I'm gonna show you all. So they're they're fun. Uh, so and then it's a little bit sad, but this is the, the female founder, Hanukkah. She uh, got I lost, and this is something you know I'm quite passionate about. That she's labeled the female founder. I think that says enough. It's crazy, and it's um, something we have to change. So, just so I gave you a, a sort of a, a few of Amsterdam startup city. And there are three really interesting things going on now. There's gonna there more and more. There's a connection with the corporate world. And why is that interesting in Amsterdam is because um, I think what's interesting of Dutch culture is that um, contact between people can be very um, not hierarchical as much, a little bit less, like you can talk to a CEO of a, of a big company quite easily in a very informal manner as well and they actually like that, you know, be yourself, be honest about what you do. And so, because of that, you see a lot of, you know, uh, corporate people want to work with startups. So that's becoming more and more interested. You know, the startups are the hot thing at the moment. So you see here, old min minister is now um, a, um, works for uh, works for a sort of thing. For um, <laughs> health insurance. insurance, healthcare insurance. So and he really wanted to know the e-health startups. And, um, and here you see uh, the B building, and IBM is in the building. And it used to be the whole building used to be of IBM. Now they have this small part because they really want to be in a startup world. B Amsterdam is, by the way, where we have our office and where everybody's invi invited to. Uh, to have a look in the, that part of the startup world. Another, also going corporate also has something to do with how uh, the government, the local government is working. They're having a prog program which is called Startup in Residence. And so it's a, a sort of a connection between challenges of the city and how startups can solve it. And, um, and I think that's really interesting how you can see these crossovers. Uh, sort of uh, using the potential and innovation power of startups to solve challenges in the city. Um, another thing which is really interesting is going international. Uh, we got on the European Digital City Index on the, on the I think, second place is Startup City in, in Europe, so that's a big thing. Um, why? I think mostly because Nelly Kroos with Startup Delta, which is an initiative of the whole of the Netherlands uh, to sort of um, actually most get, get to know, the world get to know the Netherlands as a startup country. And there has been a lot of, you know, uh, sort of negative, especially Dutch like to complain. So, you know, it's like, oh, I don't know, Nelly Kroos always saying the same thing at every event. And what she actually always says is, you know, fail, fail harder, uh, mostly about failure. And, well, she, I think, is really right about this. Still, in the Netherlands, it's not done to fail. So I'm really happy she keeps repeating that stuff. And Startup Delta has really made uh, the Netherlands much more known internationally as a, as a country where there are startups and where you have, you know, 
uh, where you have potential for, for from other countries to come here and live here and work at a startup or set up your own startup. So she is doing good. Another international thing is Amsterdam Capital Week at the end of uh, September. At the end of May, there you have two events. I can tell you all about how that happened, but it's another, it's something else. Startup Fest Europe and the next web conference. Um, and both, really, if you're interested, please go to both because you'll get so much. I don't know how you can combine it, but you can probably. And the Startup Fest Europe is throughout the whole Netherlands, and the next web is in, the, is, is in Amsterdam. So, oh yeah, the second really interesting development is the government is really putting a lot of effort in educating people on tech skills. Uh, this is a school called BSSA, also in B Amsterdam, where about 100 young people who didn't get a job in like a, a year or so got an e education of three months and, uh, and learned how to be a growth hacker or a developer. Uh, so that's really interesting. And this is Kaisa Alongren, our deputy mayor. And she's, uh, all, she, she's like head of the Startup Amsterdam program. So this is the school. So what's next? Well, if, uh, if I have a say on it, uh, there will be more female founders. And uh, this is a scary thing in the Netherlands. Uh, I've seen that in the US, it's really normal to organize a conference, uh, you know, titled Female Founders Conference. If you would suggest something here, and I've suggested it a lot of times just to feel the waters, people always tell me the same thing. People, and then I mean men, always tell me the same thing. Yeah, but it shouldn't, you know, be a problem. Why is it a problem, you know, as a female founder, you should just do it. And then, yeah, I know, I, I did it, but still there are so much more underlying, uh, you know, things going on and we don't know about. And it's really normal in the U.S. to organize this stuff. And I think that's not, you know, a coincidence. I think they know, what, they have uh, sort of really legitimate reasons why they do it. Because, um, you know, <coughs> you need more female founders and you need more female techies. So I would love to organize something like this at one point, or that it's normal even to have a lot of female founders everywhere. Um, these are two things uh, we are organizing, and I already actually explained, so I'm not going to pitch it even more. But if you're a startup, cycle with us at the end of September. And our ambition as Professional Rebel is just to sort of make every company a sort of startup kind of ignite the startup spirit in every company. So that's our sort of focus for uh, for the next coming years. So that's uh, that's it.